Welcome, everybody. It is day seven. I'm Pastor Craig again. I want to thank you for joining as we uh, kind of come together for a, just a brief time of reflection and then uh, hopefully launch into prayer. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this day is kind of a, a fun one for me because really I think it gets at the heart of what it means to be a disciple. So um, you're going to read today from Ephesians. So if you want to open up Ephesians and you can get to chapter four, again, you're going to read that on your own. Uh, but I just wanted to bring a highlight that the heart of this is this amazing news that by being a follower of Christ, you become a part of the body of Christ. You become a part of this body so that if we're true believers, whether we're uh, attending a church uh, on Main Street or on <laughs> an, a parallel street, if we're truly believers, we're all part of that same body. Um, and so what we end up finding is that we have specific parts that we're called to play. And sometimes, um, like a body, you have hidden parts and you have parts that are much more, uh, you know, out, out in action. The hands, the part of a human body, the hands tend to be out there and moving, whereas the hair generally just kind of hangs out. So I don't know if that's a great example, but that's what I'm thinking is when we talk about the body, we're talking about the fact that there are gifts that you've been given by the Spirit. Um, and we want to make sure that as you seek to know God more in your walk and follow in His, uh, in what He calls you to, uh, that you're looking more like Jesus and that you're operating in the way that you've been designed to operate. So uh, that hair one was a horrible example. So I apologize for that for those of you who like your hair and it's wavy and, and moving. But um, one of the things I want to focus on today, and I'm actually going to read these um, but here's some questions that come out. So look at those on your own going to the website or the app. But um, here's, here's a question for you. Who are you currently meeting with and having spiritual conversations with? What does that look like in your life? These are kind of some challenges I want to throw your way. Are you actually meeting with anybody? And that could be for somebody to meet with you to disciple you, but as well as you meeting with others to disciple them. Uh, next question I have is, how many people have you been able to talk about or share the gospel with? If you were to go down the list of people in your life, how many people would you say you've had that opportunity to really share the gospel with? Because you're part of the body and part of the purpose of the body is to bring glory to God and to share the gospel and make him known. That is part of what we're called to do. And then... Um, one of the, the things that I want you to look at then is the, the prayer. And I'm going to read the three prayer focuses today uh, just because I think they're, they're valuable because, again, we're going to pray, but we're going to invite God into speaking to us and challenging our hearts. So the first one is pray for those who you are meeting with that they would surrender their lives to Jesus. So that's the assumption here that, that you are actually meeting with somebody who doesn't even know really who Jesus is or hasn't yet uh, came to a place where they said, yeah, I, I want to surrender my life. Second would be, if you're not meeting with anybody, here's a dangerous prayer. Pray that God would connect you with somebody so that you could begin to have spiritual conversations. Uh, that's a prayer that uh, if you take seriously, I think these are the prayers that God can't wait to answer. Um, so uh, encourage you to be praying that one. And third, pray God would give you confidence to share the gospel in word and in action so that what you say mirrors what you do. Uh, that would be kind of the desire of this. So you may, in this process, be uh, perhaps uh, revealed to you some areas in your life that don't quite match what the gospel looks like, what it looks like to be uh, a believer, to be loved by God, to be um, called into his family, to live with compassion for others and so forth. So uh, look at what it means to be uh, Christ like to be an imitator as you look at scripture and uh, in your reading today in Ephesians, there'll be some good, perhaps glimpses into God's desire for you as you are a part of the body. All right, thank you again for joining us. I uh, release you now to go ahead and spend some time in prayer. As always, give God thanks for his rich mercy over your life and then ask him to work in you. Have a great day.